many of you are probably um, uh, phone users and college students, and if you're anything like the average phone user or college student, you probably dropped your phone at least once and maybe go through a few phone cases a year. And what if I told you that you could create a customized phone case like this? I just want to show you guys how to pass around. What if I told you you could create something like this in just a few hours for just a few pennies? And 3D printing can do exactly that. Added, also known as additive manufacturing, 3D printing um, provides possibilities for small scale customized manufacturing and has revolutionized fields such as architecture, medicine, and engineering. <clears throat> a common consumer 3D printer uses fused deposition modeling, a method of 3D printing that uses plastic filament fed through a nozzle that's melted and then deposited onto a build plate layer by layer to create an object. And you can see this process creating a longhorn in the video. And so this ability to create almost any object that you can imagine is invaluable to students, professors, and researchers. <clears throat> but the current issue that we face today is a lack of accessibility to um, affordable 3D printing services. And so today, I'm going to talk to you about how my research has solved this problem, or helped solve this problem at the University of Texas at Austin. And so when I joined Dr. Seekersad's research lab two years ago, we began the designs for the innovation station, which you can see there. And so this was a 3D printing vending machine that would provide access to 3D printing to anyone with a UTEID. And um, and so current uh, 3D printing technology, just to take a step backwards, requires a user to scrape off a part with a spatula or another tool, um, as you can see that I'm doing in the video above. And so this creates a problem where you cannot print multiple parts in succession, one after another, without this external input of like scraping off a part like I'm doing. And so the creation of an automatic part removal system for the innovation station would be invaluable to allow it to progress through a queue of parts and operate in a public space without this external input. And so my research focused on designing and building this automatic part removal system for a 3D printer, and this focused on three main areas of the 3D printer the build plate, rapid cooling, and the sweeper. And so common build plates are made of acrylic covered in blue painter's tape, as you saw in the, video, the previous video. And so this helps the part adhere to the surface um, and stick while you're printing the part. However, um, after the part, you want to be able to detach it. And so I conducted experiments, um, or I investigated different build plate materials and temperatures that would allow the part to detach while still providing sufficient adhesion during the build to keep it attached while you're printing. And so then I conducted experiments that encompassed both high and low surface area parts to ensure that the system would be able to remove any kind of part that a user would submit. So you can see on the bottom there's like a very large surface area part that's about like 8 inches long, and then you can see some small surface area parts on the top. So you have to ensure that the small ones don't come unstuck and the large ones don't stick too much when you're trying to detach them. And so through these experiments, um, I measured the, the force that was required to detach the part, and I concluded that a glass build plate that was heated to 70 degrees Celsius and cooled to 25 degrees Celsius was optimal for this part adhesion and detachment. So at the conclusion of the build, this part needs to be um, detached. And so I conducted a second set of experiments to determine the optimal method of detaching it using rapid cooling. Um, I investigated both the placement of fans around the 3D printer and the duration of the cooling period um, to create this system. And so through my research, uh, okay. um, anyway, so through my research I employed a, a dual fan cooling system that would cool both the part and the build plate. And so this featured a fan that is adjacent to the build plate and one above the part. And so you'd be able to see that in the image. Essentially, there's two fans that are both acting to cool the part. Um, and then so now that the part has been detached, um, you need to physically remove it from the printer and into a retrieval area for a user to pick up their part. And so I, I created many iterations of the design of the sweeper, which actually physically removes the part. And you can see a few of these here with variations of a wedge-like structure on the front that help with removing the part. Our final sweeper design, seen in the video, um, can remove uh, almost any part that is, that's submitted and printed by a user, and this helps the printer progress through the queue of parts. 
And this queue of parts is populated through our website by user submission that are just submitted remotely just through our website. So if you just have a digital file, you can submit it, it'll get printed, and then eventually removed by the sweeper. And so, okay, so the Innovation Station is, uh, was launched last September in 2014, and is currently operating in the lobby of the ETC. And so you may ask, uh, now that it's been running for this whole year, how people have been taking advantage of it? And so I'll, I'll tell you a few examples. Um, last spring, we were approached by the UT Physics de um, Department, uh, a research lab there, and they were interested in constructing um, a prototype for a particle detector and an enclosure for that. And so we worked with them, and they, these uh, researchers were able to use the Innovation Station to print this uh, enclosure for the particle detector and take measurements. And another example that's with more personal use rather than research is we had a blind uh, or a visually impaired student from UT who approached us with the intent of printing topographical or 3D maps of the of the of the campus um, to to just help navigate our way. Um, and so there's future research planned um, that involves uh, printing or involves expanding the range of materials and also uh, creating a more reliable system. Um, and so I'd also like to thank a few people, uh, just Dr. Carolyn Sieberside and Joshua Kuhn and all the other people who helped work on this amazing project. Or else 